My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control Software Tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this, assigning a secondary IP address via Camera Repair and Firmware Upgrade Nucleus Application Tutorial you will learn how to assign a secondary IP address to a phantom camera. It is important to note that the Vision Research assigned IP address will not be removed from the camera when you add a secondary IP address. Some IT departments require that a specific IP address be assigned to the computer being used to control the camera in order for them to support it. This is where assigning a secondary IP address would satisfy their requirements. Another reason to assign a secondary IP address is that you may have a network already configured and wish to use that network's addressing scheme to control the camera. To start the process, I'll click the Camera Repair and Firmware Upgrade Nucleus button in the Manager tab that will open the Phantom Nucleus dialog window. The next step is to tell the software the camera I want to add a secondary IP address to. I can manually enter this information or I can select the camera from the camera's pull down selection list and the required data will be populated automatically for me. For this tutorial I'm going to select the Miro 320S CAMP2 camera. As you can see the software it has entered the IP address of the camera and the camera's hardware version number. It has also populated the camera's info fields with the serial number of the camera the assigned name of the camera, the firmware version installed in the camera, the installed FPGA or field programmable gate array firmware version, and the kernel version installed in the camera. Now I need to click the secondary IP tab to enter the required information. If I didn't know what to enter, I would ask my IT department for the appropriate information. The first field is pretty straightforward. This is where I will enter the secondary IP address I'm going to add to the camera. In this case, 192.168.1.40. The next field is the subnet mask. This field is used to differentiate the network and host identifiers of the IP address. I'm going to enter a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. The broadcast address determines which IP addresses can access the camera. By entering 255.255.255.255, I'm allowing the complete IP address range to access the camera. The gateway address is used to specify the address of a layer 3 switch or router the camera would use if it were connected to one. In my case, I do have it connected to a layer 3 switch assigned 192.168.1.1. Now that all the information has been entered, the only thing left to do is click on the set button for these settings to be applied. Now I'll close the application by selecting the upload files tab then click the close button. Now I need to change the IP address and subnet mask of the connected computer to ensure that both the camera and the control unit are assigned to the same network and can communicate with each other. Remember, the IP address must be a unique IP address. So for this example, I'm going to change the address of my laptop to 192.168.1.30 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and reconnect to the camera. As you can see, the camera we just assigned with the secondary IP address is displayed under the camera's group. And just to prove I'm connected to the camera using the newly assigned secondary IP address, I'll right click on the camera's name and select device info from the pull down selection list. And verify the IP address of the camera. 
So that concludes the assigning a secondary IP address by a camera repair and firmware upgrade nucleus application tutorial, where you learn the process to add a secondary IP address to a phantom camera and verify the address. For in-depth phantom operations, Vision Research offers phantom operations certification training. Please visit our training webpage at www.phantomhighspeed.com Service Support Training or contact your local sales representative who can be found on our website under the Contact Us pull-down selection list for more information about our training sessions or for Phantom Cameras in general.